Currently, Steve and I are standing in a home that is two years old and has never been lived in. The home has been sold three times and is one of the most desirable areas in all of Las Vegas Valley. Yeah, Kendall, this is a perfect example of uh, a home that's been used to get cash out, using mortgage fraud, using addendums, uh, bumping the appraisal. Um, we can walk through this house and it's amazing how nice this house is and it's two years old, no one's ever lived in it. Um, and now uh, it, was, it was bumped up all the way to $740,000 and now the bank is selling it for three forty. dollars This is just one of the effects that this cashback fraud is having on the Vegas market, uh, actually the national market, but uh, right now Vegas is being hit hard by this cashback uh, fraud and we're going to show you uh, the house, what it looks like and how amazing this house has never been lived in. Um, and then we'll go into the effects that uh, this is causing the other neighbors in the house, in the area that bought their house legit. Now we see the effect of that because now the bank is trying to get rid of this house for a fraction of what they lent on it because they thought they were lending on a house that was worth seven hundred, uh, seven, you know, close to seven hundred thousand dollars, actually over seven hundred thousand dollars, and now they can't even get rid of it for three eighty. Um, when which is a more reasonable price what it should have sold for in the first place correct in a hot market it did sell for five hundred thousand it sold because they were getting a kickback under the table the cash and then they were doing it again with another buyer until they couldn't do it anymore once the prices got too high well obviously the pyramid starts falling and that's what we're seeing right now in this neighborhood is a perfect example if you stand on the corner here you look that way there's four houses that have been foreclosed on you look across the street there's three across the street you look down on this side of the street there's three more down that way, and uh, we'll walk through this house right now, and you'll see this has never been lived in, brand new house, and this is just one house of thousands that, uh, you know, for buyers, you can get a good deal right now. This is 15% of what it uh, sold for, you know, about a year ago. You know, fraudulently priced, of course, but if you're going off that price, it's 50%. Let's take a look around. You still have the, in the dining room here, you still have the fresh vacuum marks from the original builder. And if we go upstairs, well, once the buyers or the investment uh, groups find one house that they can get a bumped up appraisal on, well, then it makes it easier to do other houses in the same neighborhood without having to get another appraisal bump. They can have any appraiser do it because they have the comp. So, for example, in this neighborhood, one of these houses was the first to get the phony appraisal, and then after that, all they did is just kept on doing this, using that appraisal as the comps for the others. And that's why you have this house, uh, right down the street there's four in a row, and across the street there's six in a row, and around the corner here there's four more in a row that uh, have all been foreclosed on with, due to the cash back. This house is an incredible view. Yeah, it's you have a view of the entire uh, valley. Uh, in the back here, you have a uh, view of the uh, entire strip. Over here, you got the, the mountain view. And you can see we're pretty high up here. We've got some good news and we've got some bad news. The bad news is, if you bought here legitimately, you're going to be upside down for quite a while. The good news is, if you're a buyer and you're in this market, you'll be able to buy a house for 300, 350000 that was uh, less than a year ago, $700,000. And a few of your neighbors will still have loan balances of six fifty to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. When you can pick up this house, or very a few of them similar to this house, for approximately three hundred, three hundred fifty thousand dollars. And for that, you have twenty-seven, twenty-eight hundred square foot, five bedrooms, a view of the valley. If you go in the back here, you have a view of the entire strip. So there is a silver lining to this uh, dark cloud. You just have to find these uh, deals out here, and th there, there's a few out here to be found. So the home that you just saw in a gated community with strip views in a desirable area in Las Vegas Valley is now on the market for 360000 I think it's 2400 or 2500 and change square feet, And it, it's apparent that there's about eight other foreclosures in that subdivision on that street. Just on that street, yeah, just, just on, on the street. corner. When we stood at the corner, if you looked, you'd see eight foreclosures. Yeah. So this neighborhood... They've never been lived in. Have never been lived in. Nice neighborhood, too. So this neighborhood is now basically a ghost town. Now, these will get sold off little by little at a fire, a bank foreclosure fire sale. At $360,000, that was a good price on that house. 
especially for um, what it has. So that would be the ripple effect. The person that's living in there, when we were there, we seen a school bus come by and uh, some kids get off of it. And I just thought, oh, oh my God, these poor people, they're, they're, they're so buried unless they paid cash for the house or anything like that. They're going to have to stay in that home for who knows how many years for the value to come back to where they will be even in it at least. If they can stay in that long, if they have an adjustable, there's even if they have perfect credit and they have an adjustable loan, which many people do, there's no possible way they can refinance that house under the current conditions because there's no equity. And that's what we're seeing a lot of right now. People's arms are adjusting. They need to refinance, but they've lost their, they have no equity. Like Steve says, even if they're in great credit, the value of the house has to be there. The house has to be um, qualified as well as the borrower Correct. in a finance. So we have these homes not qualifying for the loan, and that is just adding to our foreclosure crisis. All these Wall Street lenders and uh, big mortgage bankers bet on the real estate market always going up. Yeah. They didn't plan on the market not going up anymore. Well, yeah. not only is it not going up, it's dropping. So now all these programs that came out are the worst possible programs that could exist because it's all based on the people refinancing when they have equity. Right. Well, there's no equity anymore. There's no if they bought in 05 or 06 or 07, there's a very good chance that there's no equity. Yeah. And now we're getting into 04. Well, especially if they did an interest-only adjustable zero-down arm. Right. Correct. Let's talk about the Bush uh, tax plan and relieving some of the li the tax liabilities of someone who has lost their home. Now, uh, I was reading the other day that the IRS is not going to come after the individuals who have lost their home to foreclosure for the difference in what they bought the home for, the bank loaned them, and what the bank actually had to take as the loss, which is a change because before when you had a foreclosure, the IRS had the option of coming back to you and, and charging you that difference as income. From my understanding, if it's your primary residence, your tax liability will be lessened or right. they'll forgive it if it's your primary residence. But as always, people should always check with their CPA. Or always check with your tax person. However, for the people that went around that were also victims of, of this fraud, from the fraudulent LLCs that bought three, four, five, six houses this way because they thought that they were just being a real estate investor, they're not going. They're they're not going to be relieved of that. Uh, no, according to this, to Bush's uh, only on a principle. Or not just Bush's, but Congress's with that bill that was passed. It's basically just a primary residence. So if it's an investment, they're most likely going to get. Well, they're supposed to get ten ninety nine. Um, the difference between what it's sold for and what the so so this we're seeing all the foreclosures now, but then we're going to see people ye next year and a year after that with huge huge tax liabilities. This is really just the tip of the iceberg of what we're talking about. Even if we get out of this foreclosure crisis, we're going to have people in debt for years to the IRS over this. Well, obviously the, they're going to have to adapt and. Congress is going to have to pass some laws or the banks are going to have to change their guidelines in order for, to people that have this problem in the future. And the only way banks make money is if they lend money. So obviously they're going to have to change their guidelines in the future. So the people have three or four foreclosures or short sales on their credit. If the banks want to make money, they're going to have to lend to these people sometime. They're going to have to change their guidelines. Um, we like to keep these things between five and ten minutes. I think we're running over here. This is part two of our three parts, our three part series. The next part is going to be all about solutions. We've identified the problem and we've identified the ripple effects of the problem. In part three, we're going to talk about solutions and how maybe some people can get lucky still gambling in Vegas on foreclosures. Steve, thanks a lot. Thank you.